Hey, Crossgates. It's uh, Wednesday morning, and I wanted to give us our, our weekly update of, of all things going on in the life of the church. Uh, thankfully, it's not crazy this week so far. Um, really, I'm just excited about um, the opportunities to roll forward, um, coming back together in ways at, at our church. And uh, I guess what I want to do is just kind of go back over that again of what we're trying to do. Um, the worship services on Sunday morning uh, currently right now are um, 1030. Um, we do want uh, people to wear masks, um, specifically when moving, singing, or talking. Um, and so far, I'm really proud of y'all. Thank y'all for all going along with that protocol for now. Um, I want to share that uh, all of our staff have um, been registered now uh, and he have either received at least one shot or all going to receive uh, a, a, our vaccination. And so uh, mine is, isn't until the 24th. But um, the, the decision behind that was um, we had been waiting um, because, uh, well, the the state just changed their their status to 50 years now and older but um we wanted to make sure that everyone in the church who was over a certain age over 65 75 wouldn't be bumped by any one of us going and getting a shot and as soon as the johnson and johnson uh, vaccine rolled out and then as we were looking at the different vaccination sites we began to realize that there were locations around the state that were not running out of shots in fact they were ending the day with vaccinations that had not been given. And so at that point, um, the protocol for the state for uh, offering vaccines included congregant care uh, workers. And I um, decided that uh, as a staff cohesively together, that it, it doesn't make any sense for just one of us to go, that we all go. And so all of your staff will be um, vaccinated or in the process of it. And when that occurs, when when all the staff are fully va are fully vaccinated, um, it, it alters our thinking as well. We become a little bit more ambitious. We become um, a lot more engaged in um, additional ways to, to roll forward physically together. And um, I noticed, by the way, that um, the CDC – has announced that if you're fully vaccinated, and it's been at least a couple of weeks since you've been fully vaccinated, you are now basically under no restrictions um, that you may come back and, um, and meet. And that's the reason why that we've allowed the friendship class specifically to begin meeting. They're all vaccinated. And um, they, they, it was so good to hear voices on Sunday morning in the hallways. Um, but I went in there and told them that they didn't have to wear their masks in that room. And they all said, no, we want to continue to wear our masks until... Um, this is something that we can all do together as a church. And so I commend their faith and I commend their love um, and their their joy in getting back together. Um, we as a church uh, will be having a church council meeting in the next um, few weeks. And we are going to discuss at that point uh, what kind of protocols uh, do we need to ha have for all the other classes to find a way to meet. And that will include, we do need to look at reorienting some of the rooms, some of the spaces, because some of the Sunday school classes have grown rather large, and uh, we might need to shuffle um, some spaces around. Uh, but don't worry, we, we're not going to do that without consulting and talking with all the different um, um, classes. But we're just really excited that it feels more normal now to have to deal with logistical issues of where people are going to be. And, and that's beautiful. Weather permitting, this Sunday night, um, we had planned throughout Lent to have evening services outside um, at the at the outdoor chapel. So at 6.15 Sunday evening, weather permitting, that's where we will be gathering. And um, this week, you know, we in this journey with Jesus, um, 40 days to Jerusalem, we've been looking at emotional responses and reactions um, that we find in the scriptures, both both that Jesus was confronted with, but also how then we see into us this same kind of emotional response and how it's maybe different and how it's the same. And this week is embarrassment. And um, and we often think embarrassment is something to be avoided. And of course, doing something boneheaded on a regular basis, um, if that keeps happening, maybe we need to look at um, how we're acting or, or whatever. But embarrassment is really not the is really not the issue that we should be overly concerned about because um, it is a positive way for us to deal with something that's happened that is incongruent with us and with someone else. But what happens when that embarrassment isn't resolved and it moves into shame and it moves into a, a sense that I am 
not worthy. I'm broken. I am internally, to my core, not worthy. And um, and how the the ministry of Jesus reacted and responded to that, and how Jesus's trip to the cross um, uh, responded and reacted to that, so that when the guilt in our lives is acknowledged, how is it resolved? And so that's what we we're going to be looking at this Sunday morning and this Sunday evening. And so, again, a shorter little update with not much major content except for things are starting to look rather normal, um, and it gives me joy when we do that. Our, our psalm for the week is Psalm 107, and it talks about this word. It has let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How does that play into our conversation about embarrassment? The word itself, redeemed, is an acknowledgement that we were lost, we were broken, something was messed up. And for when we when we stand up and say we are the redeemed of the Lord, we're not just saying just saying that Jesus loves us, the Lord loves us. We're saying that we were lost and broken, and we acknowledge that publicly, that we don't have it all figured out, but we are being made right in Christ. So here is the psalm. This is Psalm 107, uh, and portions of Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble, and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, and from the north and from the south. Some were sick through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. And let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with great song. We are the redeemed of the Lord. We do not stand on our own righteousness. We acknowledge that the Lord has come to us in our sickness and our distress and has saved us. So then when it's time for us to share why that hope is in us and when it's time for us to gather together to celebrate and sing songs of joy, then we do so because we are the redeemed of the Lord. Crossgates, I see Christ in you. I believe in you. And I know that you are indeed the redeemed of the Lord. See you Sunday. Oh my goodness, y'all. I almost forgot about what this Sunday also is for us as United Methodists. It's UMCOR Sunday. UMCOR is the United Methodist Committee on Relief, and it is an important ministry of relief and hope that we all participate in. And this Sunday is the Sunday where we take up a special offering to help provide uh, their ability to continue to operate. I think it's important for us to acknowledge that it's probably um, one of the best ministries that we got as United Methodists that just always there and present when there is a disaster. Um, all the money that they um, that they need to operate every year is received through this offering, meaning that um, the rest of what they do, um, 100% of what's donated specifically to the unique ministries or to the advances that people can give to specific ministries goes in directly to that. Um, and so what I, want y'all, what I want to encourage y'all to do is that if you are so moved and so inclined, if you'd like to make a special gift um, in addition to your tithe uh, to support this in, uh, ministry, um, please designate that uh, to do so on the check or however you want to do that. You can do it online. Um, and just mark that. But UMCOR is a, just an incredible, incredible ministry that even as Methodists are wrestling with some big issues right now, we do not have to wrestle over the importance of UMCOR. So um, y'all, let's do this. Let's, let's, uh, let this be a reflection of the redemption that we have in Christ, that we will be a part of what God's redeeming work is doing when those around us and around the world are confronted by um, natural disaster, political disaster, whatever disaster may come. So Thanks, Crossgates. I believe in you. I see Christ in you.